Are we doing MCOM wrong? Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. I got interested in ham radio after an EF4 tornado tore through my hometown, leaving us without power or communications for a few days. Now, when I first got into radio, I was super eager to learn. I wanted to learn everything. I wanted to learn single sideband voice. I wanted to learn FL Digi. I wanted to learn Winlink. But I always had that focus of emergency communications because I wanted to be better prepared the next time a natural disaster hit our community. One of the problems I ran into right out of the gate was the lack of opportunity to practice those emergency communications. Sure, there was field day. Winter field day wasn't even really a thing, if at all, back when I first got licensed. And there was always one, maybe two ARIES events, ARIES exercises, set exercises, if you will, simulated emergency training. There was always one or two of those a year, but that just wasn't cutting it for me. I wanted more and more opportunities to go out and really practice and hone the ability to communicate when everything else was offline. Unfortunately, there just wasn't many of those opportunities that existed. However, today, I think we've got something that gives us that ability anytime we want it. And that activity is Parks on the Air. Parks on the Air, in my opinion, is one of the best things that you can do if you want to get better at emergency communications. Now, granted, it's not going to teach you things like the ICS command structure or even how to fill out an ICS 213, but it does teach us a lot of other things that we can use if we're faced with a natural disaster that takes out normal means of communications. It's going to teach you how to build an effective go kit because every time you go out here and do a parks on the air activation, you're going to figure out what you really need inside that go kit and what things you can leave behind. So it really teaches you a lot when it comes to your equipment and being in the field. It'll also teach you a lot about power and power consumption. How much do you really need to get out and get on the air? For instance, right now I'm running the ICOM 705 with a little HT battery on the back of it. I've also got a spare one of those in my bag. I know that I'm good for at least a couple of hours running with just those two little HT batteries. However, if I knew I was going to be out here for six, eight, ten hours, well, those two little batteries are not going to cut it. How do I know that? Because I've done enough activations with this ICOM 705 to know roughly how long it's going to last me. Parks on the Air can teach you a lot of other things as well. For instance, as you learn to go out and activate a park and work through that pileup, well, now you've learned how to manage having a lot of operators coming at you at one time. So if you can work through that pileup with parks on the air, going back and working the two meter voice repeater during your weekly net or during an actual event, well, that's going to be pretty dadgum easy for you because I've never seen that many people come at us during a net as I have coming at me on HF during a Parks on the Air activation. It'll also teach you a lot about antennas. It's going to teach you which ones are easy to pack up and take with you. It's going to teach you which ones are the easiest to deploy when you're in the field. My personal favorite is an infed half wave. I like it because it's multi-banded. I've got 10, 20, uh, let's see, 10, 15, 20, and 40 meters all on that one antenna and I don't even need a tuner to use it. So that's one less piece of equipment that I've got to carry with me. That's one less piece of equipment that's got the potential to fail while I'm in the field. You'll also learn how different antennas are going to perform if you take a look at your map 
after a Parks on the Air activation, you'll be able to get an idea of where's the, uh, where's the most contacts that you're making with a particular antenna. If you're running a in-fed half wave and you're only running that thing about five or six feet off the gram, well, you're probably going to see that most of those contacts are pretty close to you, three, maybe 500 miles out when we're working with 40 meters because we're running an NVIS antenna. However, contrast that with something like the ATOS antenna that's on the back of my truck. That being a vertical antenna, the takeoff angle is going to be different and your contacts are going to be a little bit further away. Now, something else I would recommend if you really want to practice with emergency communications, one of the things I highly, highly recommend is learning to do Winlink. Every time you go out to do a Parks on the Air activation, whether you're going to do that with voice or maybe FT8, go ahead and set up and do at least one Winlink connection. Maybe you just post a position report. Maybe you just check your messages or maybe you send a message. Whatever you decide to do, go ahead and make at least one WinLink contact. That's going to show you or teach you as time goes forward which gateways you can reliably get into with which type of antennas. For instance, I know in my area, uh, if we're talking during the day, there are two go-to gateways that I'm going to use for WinLink. One of them is right across the uh, Tennessee-Kentucky line in Kentucky, and it is an easy gateway for me to get into on 40 meters. The other one is in Arkansas, and that's another easy one for me to get into. And both of those I can get into during the day with just five watts on a radio like the 705. Now, if it was early in the morning, I would still maybe use 40 meters, but I would be looking at uh, gateways maybe in Texas or Michigan. I know of a couple that I can usually get into even with five watts if it's early enough in the day. But as the day goes and 40 meters shortens up, I'm going to use one of those either in Kentucky or Arkansas. But if you just do at least one Winlink connection every time you go out before you know it, you're going to be really, really good at Winlink. Parks on the Air is one of those things that I wish had been available early on when I first got my ticket. I really believe that if you want to get good at emergency communications, Parks on the Air provides a really fun way to learn how to go out and work portable, whatever the conditions may throw at you. Guys, if you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.